So firstly, we'll be testing for gases, starting with hydrogen. The test for this is simple. Hold a lighted splint at the mouth of your sample. If hydrogen is present, the splint will go off with a squeaky pop. For oxygen, hold a glowing splint towards the sample. If oxygen was present, the splint will relight. Next, carbon dioxide. If carbon dioxide is bubbled through lime water, the lime water would become milky or cloudy. Damp litmus or universal indicator paper would first turn red and then get bleached for chlorine gas. Simply use universal indicator or red litmus for ammonia. It will turn blue. Moving on from gases, we'll now look at the test for water. Anhydrous copper 2 sulfate will turn blue from white if water is present. Here's the equation that is used to show that. Also, this test does not show that the water is pure since it works for any substance that contains water. Now let's see the testings for ions, which are positive ions, negative ions, the ones which we discussed in the ionic bonding video. So the first method we would use is a flame test. A flame test has a platinum or nichrome wire dipped into concentrated hydrochloric acid and then into the salt that you want to test so that some salt sticks on the end. The wire and the salt are then held just within a non-luminous Bunsen burner flame and then the color is observed. So if there is lithium ions present, the flame would turn red. Yellow shows that there is a presence of sodium ions. Lilac means that potassium ions are present. Orange red color meaning calcium ions are present. A blue green color would show that copper 2 ions are present. While we are on the topic of ions, let's see how cations will react with sodium hydroxide solution. So, if copper 2 plus ion is present, there would be a blue precipitate forming. The name of the precipitate would be copper 2 hydroxide. If the ion Fe2 plus is present, a green precipitate will form with ion 2 hydroxide formed. Fe3 plus means an orange brown precipitate will be formed. We call this ion 3 hydroxide. And if we try an ammonium ion that is NH4 plus, an ammonium gas is produced. There will be no precipitate here. To test for carbonate, we first add some dilute hydrochloric acid. If there is fizzing or effervescence, you would know that a gas is given off. Then test the gas for carbon dioxide by bubbling it through lime water. If it turns cloudy, then carbon dioxide is present. The sample is a carbonate. For testing for sulfates, the salt must be added to hydrochloric acid and then to barium chloride solution. If sulfate ions are present, a white precipitate would be formed. Just a note, when adding an acid to the salt, do not use sulfuric acid as that contains sulfate ions on itself. Finally, testing for chlorides, bromides and iodides. For all three of these halide ions, you must add nitric acid followed by a silver nitrate solution. If chloride ions are present, you would notice a white precipitate forming. If bromide ions are present, a green precipitate will form. And if iodide ions are present, a yellow precipitate will form. For sulfate and halide ions, the test acid is added to remove interfering ions like carbon ion from the test solution. Well, that's all for today. If you preferred it instead of a whack in the face with your textbook, then like and consider subscribing.